Hey YouTube, this is Cursed, and I'm back bringing you more of the tutorial explaining how to import Elsword characters into MMD. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to organize the model and make it look a bit more like the actual character, along with going over the user interface. I'm actually going to start with the user interface now. I've already explained the four menu options and basically what's in them, although there isn't really much that I know. Anyway, on this first tab on the information view as compared to the PMX view, you've got your description. For now, I only really know what these two sections are over here. I don't know what the top does. These two buttons over here represent the language. The first button represents what you'll see in the Japanese version of M MMD, and the second button shows up in the English version, the text description when you load in the model. So for now, I'm just gonna type it in the English because it's just for me, and I'm not really going to need it. So I'm just gonna do like Eve code elector or something and then just give it a simple description. You can do whatever you want, but that's good enough for me. Anyway, that's all you really need in this tab. The second tab and third tab represent the vertices of the character, which you can see all these. Each one represents a single point, and between them are polygons that make up the actual figure. Although, don't mess with them, elsewise you'll end up with a model that looks something like this, potentially, and you don't want that. The fourth tab is the um, the structures that make up the character. For example, the foot, the hair, the hand, the, low, the lower body, the upper body, and then the face. I'm reading them from the textures. For these, the various buttons here, you really only need one section. Although at the top here, you can change what they show up as. There's no point in changing the English because it's only referenced in this editor, and the only name reference is the Japanese name. So there's no point in giving it an English name. But anyway, my recommendation is to select all these, click the first one, then shift-click the last, and change the numbers in these boxes to these values. Keep the top one 1, change the second row all to 0.1, and then the third row to 0.25. The way I understand this is that the first row is the color, the overall color of the character, which you want white, which means it's the values of the textures. The second represents the darkness, how much it darkens the color from almost pure white. And then the third is the shine, or the sheen or something, when it's in light, how much it actually changes. Which essentially means that what it looks like here is what's going to look like an MMD, but a little bit brighter. Which matches the characters about as accurately as you can get, I've found. The fifth tab is the bones tab. It looks a bit daunting with this character having 70 bones, and by the end you might have more than 70. But there are a few that can be deleted off these lists. I think it's more like 5 or 6. But don't delete other ones other than the ones that I say you can delete, unless you know what you're doing. Elsewise, you might end up with a model that can't do certain or move certain parts because there's no bones attached to those parts. For example, if you were to delete, like, the toe or something, you would not be able to move that foot. Even if you moved the character as a whole with the central bone, it like the central bone located here, if you can see a little bit of red, if you were to move that, you would not be able to move the foot. It would stay there no matter what, because there's no um, bones waiting to it. These options also look a bit daunting, but the only thing you're really going to ever need on any of the bones is this little section here, a little bit right here. But that's about it. Now, the sixth tab represents, I believe, facial expressions. One of these represents the eyes, the other one represents the mouth. To be honest, though, I don't remember which one is which. I will be going over that in more detail when I get to actually how to do facial expressions, which will be quite a few episodes down the road. Until then, you don't have to worry about this tab. This tab here, the fourth from the right, is the um, bone structures tab. If you, On MMD, if you open it up, on the left you'll see the lists of bones and them categorized for every model you import that was made by like the creators of MMD or something. Something like that. I don't know if that's correct. But there are specific groups. This, the root group, contains the central bone and then arbitrary other bones, which probably don't need to be in the group. They won't show up. You can create your own groups. I will do that here just to show, and then you can add bones to them so that they'll show up in that specific group. I'll be going over that again later so you don't have to worry about it. If you're curious, yes, I just added one then deleted it. That's what those buttons do. Um, honestly, you really only need the add, delete, then the move up and move down, but those are not even too much necessary or too necessary anyways. 
The third to last tab is the um, physics tab. This allows parts to move on their own. For this character, the only part that would really have physics would be the hair, essentially what you would want to have physics, and then potentially these four pieces on the side. This one here, that one there, that one there, and then the other one right there. Those can also be given physics, but it's not necessary. Those are a bit harder to apply physics to. And then the second to last tab is the joint tab, which holds physics bodies, which would be, for example, the hair, to the head so the hair doesn't fall off. If you don't have a joint attaching them, the hair will fall off in a lump and roll across the ground indefinitely without ever reattaching to the model. But, for example, if you were to add a joint but do it incorrectly, it would crash MMD every time you used the model. So I would advise against doing that unless you know how to do it or follow the tutorial when it reaches that point. Anyway, now we're going to be adding the... Um, actually, no, we're going to go over what this menu does first. These five buttons show what you actually are selecting. The first button, as you've seen before, is vertices. When you draw a square, it will basically select all the vertices in that square from that angle. So if I were to do it like this, I would clip, well, the head and a rogue down. And if I were to do it at, like, this angle, I would clip like that. Yeah, I don't really know how to explain it any more than that. It's just the square with vertices. If you select the second one with it, now you have to have the first one selected, I believe. If you draw it, it will also select the polygon faces that are between all the vertices that you select. I believe if you deselect the first and just try polygon vertices, it won't select anything. Yeah. The third option is bones, which are all the parts that move the model when they're actually moved. Like, for example, if I were to move these right now, it wouldn't affect the model because this is preparing them. I'm going to undo that. Don't, don't follow what I'm doing. Don't mess with them. But... The fourth is the physics, which I explained before, and the fifth is the joints, which also I explained before. These six options each represent a different selection mode. I'm just going to go to vertice mode to explain it. The first option selects the vertice you click. It's kind of difficult. There we go. I clicked a single vertice. It only selected that vertice. The second one, which is what you've seen before, is the square. The third? Ah, I must have forgotten this in another video. That is a freeform shape. <laughs> I'm under the assumption that means I could do like that. and Yeah, it's a freeform shape. Didn't notice that one. The fourth one allows you to select a group within a circle. That circle will maintain the same shape, so zooming out will allow you, allow you to select more. Yes, I just realized that. I didn't realize that until now. But now that is a almost a perfect sphere on the head. Anyway, the second to last one will select a single polygon face. It will automatically select the both modes there, if you watch. If you were to try to disable everything and then select it... Oh. Apparently the only way you can select faces is if you do it that way. Interesting, because you can select a face with just that mode, but you have to be in that mode also. If you were to change to the square mode, it wouldn't do anything. Anyway, the last mode allows you to grab the first point it finds and then just immediately drag it. You can do that with bones also, but not recommended. It's better to more or do it more accurately the, other way, uh, accurately the other way. Anyway, now I'm swapping to bone select mode just so the screen doesn't lag as much. Over here, you have your options for movement and other such things. The only ones we're really going to need are, I believe, the third and the fourth tab and potentially the last, I believe. Oh, nope, not the last. The third, nope, actually, is it the second to last? Yes, the second to last is another view on the case that you want to be able to see things through two windows at once. For example, you could have this one facing the main direction, and then you could change something on here. For example, I'm going to go swap over to vertice mode, and then move the vertices back, and you'll see it happen from the front perspective or from whatever perspective you want inside this. Now, I don't use this often, so I don't really recommend using it, but I mean, if you want to use it, go right ahead, but it's not necessary. So I'm going to close that out. These two over here, this is the third, and this is the fourth. This, you can move what you have selected by specific values, X, Y, and Z, X being left and right, the positive, I believe, being off to the, well, the left of the character. The um, 
Y, yeah, it's to the left of the character being positive. The Y is vertical and above the character is positive. Or moving the character up is positive. And Z is in front of the character and moving the character forward is positive. You can increment them by specific ways. I'm, one of these has to do with, I believe, rotation. One of them is location and the other one is scale. But in honesty, I don't remember which one's which. I'm under the assumption, yeah, no, I don't know, actually, to be completely honest. I believe that might be location, that might be rotation. But we don't need it, so I'm going to close that out. This is what we're going to be needing right now. I'm going to go swap over to the Objects tab, make things a little bit easier, potentially, and then keep this out of the way, and then have the PMX view ready. So, this doesn't look like a model at all, right? That's expected, because all the pieces are all over the place. What I recommend doing is turning off the ability to... Actually, I haven't explained what these are quickly. The first one allows you to see bones, which turning it off and on will turn off and on the bones. That's really unnecessary. This allows you to see invisible bones, which you will need later, but you don't really need them right now. This allows you to see the polygon faces, which automatically gets turned on when you have face select mode, as you can see down there. But um, you're going to want to deselect bones... Oh, by the way, this is the physics structure, that's physics density, and that's, like, joints. Anyway, keep the um, vertices selected, but deselect the bones, so all you see are the vertices and the shapes in the model. So now what you're going to want to do is disable all the ones that are in the correct spots and move the ones that are in the incorrect spots up. So if you turn off zero, you notice that's the legs, you don't need them, they're in the correct spot. If you turn off one, that's the hair, that's the correct spot. If you turn off two, that's the hands. Those are in the incorrect spot. Turn them back on. Three is the lower body that's in the incorrect spot. So now we know we have three objects on and three objects left. We have the face, the upper body, and the hands. We're going to want to move the upper body first. I believe the upper body is four, but that just happens to be this character. Okay, yep. So you have what just the upper body is. Go over to the PMX view, click the screen, and hit Control-A, or drag a box around it. Go back to this menu and hit Control-A, or turn them all back on manually. And now you should be able to drag the group of vertices up. And then you should be able to line them up. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect, because you're working with um, pieces that aren't in the correct spots. But spend as much time as you want on it to get it as perfect as you want. I'm just going to say that's good enough, because I'm just explaining this for tutorial purposes. So I'm not going to go into immense detail to make sure all of them are lined up to the, the nth degree. They're lined up good enough, and you can't see a hole. Now, so we know that 2, 4, and 5, because those are the ones that were left checked before, are the ones that need to be moved. We already moved 4, so we only need 2 and 5 left, which are the hands and the face. I'm going to move, I believe, the face. Oops, that's the face. So I'm going to control A on this window, and then go back over here and control A again. I'm going to line up the face. If I recall, the face really only needs to be up, done up vertical in this character. And also, if I recall, the blue thing on the face is barely visible. Now, if I check that, that looks about right. Although I still would recommend keeping a window or like a web page open with an actual photo of the character so you can actually line them up like fully correctly and be sure about it. Anyway, what you're going to want to do next is you can either do the same thing with two and turn them all off, or now that you have them isolated from the rest of the body, you can just drag a box around one hand, making sure you don't touch the rest of the model, then hold shift and drag a box around the other hand. You don't hold shift for the first hand. Shift will add the pixels. For example, now if you were to do a control and left click and drag, it will deselect those pixels, but I'm going to do shift again and reselect them. Now, you do the same thing like you did with the other ones. The arrows basically will pull it in that direction. I didn't explain that before because I don't think I actually did. Ignore what the circles mean. Everything is positioned correctly. Unless you're doing a raven, then you have a hand potentially out of place. At least that's the case with the blade master. Yeah, for that, you're going to need to rotate, but those are from the um, axes, like these circular disks you have around here, which I'll explain how to use at one point, but 
I'm not close enough to explaining that right now. Make sure this is closely lined up. Oh, actually, I'm moving the wrong one. I'm thinking I'm moving the um. I'm thinking I'm moving the arm. There we go. I would say that's in place. And now, if you go back and look, that looks like a game character, not the mess it was before. I'm gonna swap back over to bone mode, just so I can maintain a little bit of frame rate, because for some reason I'm down a bit in regards to frame rate. I'm gonna turn off the bones though, and this is what the character looks like. I don't need this window anymore. And that's pretty much it, I think. At least for now, this is how you get the character to look like a character. The rest of the buttons down here you're not going to need. Honestly, in the rest of the tutorial, I don't really know how to use them. If there was anything I missed in the explanation, feel free to post it in the comments. I'll like, append it in an annotation or the description or something. I've just explained everything that I thought was necessary up to this point. You're going to want to make sure you save. I've already explained that that's save as and that's save. But if you hit save right after you've opened the model, it will make you save it with a specific name again because it, it doesn't have the correct valid file name. So just click the one you want to save it as. My recommendation is save it with a number at the end so that you have one at every step of the process. In case you make a mistake somewhere along the road, you don't have to start over from the beginning. I'm just going to save it as the same file as I'm doing backups different ways since I sometimes mess up the recordings a lot. So I'm just going back that way, and those are my backups, but I recommend doing what I just did for the backups. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back next time explaining a bit more of the bone structure. This has just been the um, window information and the preparing. I'm going to be explaining a bit more bone structure next time. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.